Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. In today's podcast, I wanted to go over more EOI news. Uh, apparently, they are officially splitting, and the PR campaign that comes along with that is in full force. Today, we're going to be specifically talking about an article on FT.com that apparently Carmine DeCibio orchestrated himself because it has a lot of details about him and, and a lot of quotes and a lot of quotes from people inside you know why it's um an interesting article kind of all over the place because it goes into a little bit of his background not too much just a typical accountant background and but it the good thing it does have is that it has more details about the the upcoming split and it talks a little bit about the big four history after Arthur Anderson and Sarbanes Oxley and how they previously split up and spun off their consulting practices and how this is, is going to happen again. And it says that one of the biggest reasons is to obviously get rid of conflicts of interest. Um, and primarily in tech. But it said that this would liberate consultants to win work from audit clients. And the split wouldn't happen until autumn of 2023, so over a year from now. And any listing, public listing, would most likely be in the U.S. And the reason they say that is because EOI's headquarters is overseas. And the advisory business would be dubbed NUCO for now, and it would be 70% owned by the partners of ENY and they anticipate that the revenues would be about 25 billion and they would look to get strong double digit percentage growth. I mean, obviously, but it's going to be hard to do that if we're in a recess re recession and Carmine DeCibio said the split is not defensive because ENY does not need more capital and that they would put the, uh, this article is kind of poorly written, but uh, they said that they would put the entity as a corporate entity rather than a partnership. And it would be able to raise funds to compete with firms like Accenture, uh, McKinsey, BCG, and Bain. And this, this is what we've talked about here many times because people ask the question, why aren't the big four accounting firms public? And you can't really give a good answer other than that they're a little bit behind the curve because there's plenty of companies like Goldman Sachs that historically have been partnerships, but then went public to raise capital. And we've also said that companies like Accenture make more money than the big four county firms, and all they do is consulting. So there is potential here for um, a lot of money to be made. In the next couple of years, probably not. Is this the best time to IPO? Probably not. But um, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. And also... KPMG came out, their CEO, I think something came out that wasn't supposed to come out, but he's he was talking trash about EY and saying how KPMG is not going to sell a brand that they've been building for 100 years. They're not going to break it up. And I mean, I think somebody might want to tell their CEO to look at recent headlines of KPMG. <laughs> I don't think they've built up anything other than being part of a big four oligopoly over accounting, <laughs> but um, I thought that was pretty hilarious. And also what's interesting here is that the partners would retain ownership of this entity. Now, obviously a lot of partners are going to sell because it's a, you know, you can make a lot of money just by selling, but it's pretty smart in that the partners are going to own it. But also I don't really see if the partners are going to retain ownership of this consulting of a large portion of this consulting business, then I don't really see how that gets rid of the conflict of interest issue. But I think that's going to come later in this because there's no way that U.S. regulators are going to be okay with that. But also from KPMG talking trash perspective, I think it's pretty dumb to talk trash about this because if anybody's been paying attention to U.S. government and regulations or even just large governments around the world, they've increased regulation bureaucracy as part of ESG because ESG isn't only environmental. This social governance 
governance part like encompasses any part of a person's life and so what that also does is is the financial markets and if if governments can't get what they want from like an, an environmental perspective through some kind of weird regulation then they go after financial markets and they try to manipulate financial markets and the big four accounting firms are one of the biggest companies in the financial markets and they're in every part of it they're a big financial company themselves but also they re they review the financials of the largest companies in the world so to think that governments aren't going to put pressure on large organizations with the global reach is foolhardy and so if EOI is able to split up and appear smaller during this time period i think that's that has a lot of value for the partners of ENY as it stands right now. And this article goes on to say that spinoff would hand multi-billion dollar or multi-million dollar windfalls to partners, cash for auditors and shares in the new venture for the consultants. Um, so I, I guess that's how they would avoid the conflict of interest. If they cash out the audit partners and then the new consulting partners um, retain 70% and it's only the consulting partners that get that then and that's how you avoid the conflict of interest there and the article also mentions the KPMG quote from Bill Thomas saying that they don't want to monetize the goodwill of our firm um, and I already spoke about that so there's also alternatives to an IPO including a strategic buyer so there's a lot of options that are that are out here right now, and I'll be covering them in future podcasts. But the the options are on the table now, and it's going to be very confusing with what is going to come after this because. Um, Because there, there's the tax practice as well, uh, and how that integrates to all of this, and so whether that's consulting or audit, there's not real discussion of that in here. And additionally, it says that before Decibio can try to convince EOI's thirteen thousand partners to back to split, he must first win agreement of its top executives, and he hopes will conclude in a couple of weeks. So that's why this article is coming out. He's now officially, or he's not officially saying this yet. There's an all hands that is supposedly going to happen this week. So we'll see if he speaks about that. But it's not official, but he's starting the PR campaign right now. Which, this thing is going to be official anytime here. And there's some additional news that came out from overseas that I'll cover in in tomorrow's episode of, of why I think this is even more official. And so he's gone to the press first before going internal and what this means for staff still nobody knows uh how they're going to retain staff through all of this nobody knows you might say well nobody's going to leave as a result of this i think that would be foolish i think there's going to be a lot of confusion the fact that he's going to the press before this the fact that he's denied that it's going to happen in the past he just Carmen de Sibio has not done this in a professional way. Uh, somebody internally leaked all this information before he came out with it. So there's there's obviously dissent in this. Uh, people aren't on board with all this. But the fact that he's not telling his employees that there's no discussion of this internally is is not good. And it it is a cash out for the current partners. There's no way that you can't say that it's not that um i think the conflicts of interest have gotten um have annoyed the partners to the point of where this is going to happen but to say that they're not going to rebuild a consulting practice after this would be foolish of course they're going to that's just the way that accounting and professional services work right now um, because clients want that they're they don't want you to just be their account they need help with everything and you're leaving money on the table if you don't take advantage of that so it's only a matter of time after this happens before ENY starts building up a consulting practice once again. But there's more news to come on this, so make sure to subscribe to this podcast. 
and check out the show notes for useful links. Thanks for listening.